Okay, this is Michael. We already got the battery in there, but we're about to go ahead and hook it up. I just want to show you what else we're going to add to it. Um, we're going to add these lights as well, instead of the regular side blinker lights that goes right here. That doesn't do anything. Sometimes they get fogged up. So we're going to put some new ones in here. We're going to mount it on there. We're going to run the wires and we're going to tap into those left and right ones. And this is how it looks like, I just want to share with you. So let me go ahead and... And also going to test the battery too to make sure it works. So let me go ahead and get something place it here I'm gonna try to do it here so I got my positive lead here just kind of latch on there and then I'll get the negative one then you can see the lights see that it's not awesome so that's what it's gonna be like and I think the blue wire might be a pulse lighter it doesn't do anything so there's a so when it blinks it'll be like that and we have a set of the other ones as well we're gonna put in the front as well I wish I got another set of these I could put in the back as well. So we're going to mount it right here. It already has a screw and everything ready to go. So that's something to look forward to. And also the tail lights. Let's just make sure all these work. <clears throat> okay, let's go ahead and let's connect that to the battery in here. Whoa. It's kind of fun playing with these. More for aesthetic, but I think it's also rationalize it for good for safety as well. Let me go and see which one is that one again. Okay, let's go ahead and get the black wire. And we're going to just tap it. Oh, that one came loose. Okay. There you go, red wire. Oh, there I go. See? Black wire is probably not connected. There we go. Beautiful, isn't it? LEDs, signal turning uh, lights. So when our signal, we have two of them. We have the turn signal here in the front. By the way, this is how it looks like when it's all set up. It looks like a cop uh, bike, doesn't it? Uh, so we got the signal lights here. We also got a signal light here for the left, uh, right here. Both of these are right hand side. And then we're gonna have the blinker installed right there. This is also gonna be the blinker. And this is all going to be a left-hand blinker, and we're going to have another blinker installed here. So it's going to be really souped up. I think this battery can handle it. And they even got one for the tail lights too. Uh, there you go. Here's the packaging that came in here. So these look pretty cool. So let's see if it actually works well. So this is the tail one. Let's check out the tail one. The tail one's probably going to be light up red. And we can easily tap the wires, as you can see here. This is our probably our brake lights. It's going to pulse. So when we hit the pulse light, this will all light up. So our running lights. Our tail lights right there. Our signal lights are right here, left and right. Now, let's go ahead and see how this one is. Get that unscrewed. Try to do it all here at one hand for you. A little tricky. Also want to share something with you too. I realize now on the in new engine when you're putting the motor oil the first time, um, you might want to leave the oil cap a little bit loosely closed because it actually needs to breathe back out of all the oil that you poured in. I didn't even start the engine yet or fire it up yet and I noticed that when I remove the cap, the oil start uh, pouring back out. Oh, we'll find that tie strap sooner or later. Okay, so let's go ahead and connect the positive. Here we go. A lot of wires here. Straighten it out a little bit. It's good to give you a longer to the wires because we don't know how much wires we really need. Okay, hook this into the positive. Which I know it probably won't stay. Hook this into the negative, and there's a positive one. Okay, let's check out that brake light. There we go. Oh, beautiful. See that? That's gonna be our brake light as soon as everything's wired up. So we're gonna have those three wires there. Yeah, I just wanna share with you, look how much oil that came out. <clears throat> I pretty much just opened it up the cap and then let it breathe. And I was I was actually thinking of tapping it more because it was actually completely empty on the stick. It didn't even show it on the minimum line at all on the excesses. And then all of a sudden I left it open just for about an hour. I came back and I was planning to, you know, maybe because that little bolt there on the side that started uh, leaking a little bit of oil. I didn't think it'll leak that much. But then when I came back, um, I guess it said, whew, it burped. 
Uh, so that was good. Uh, I mean, we were going to actually maybe took out some oil anyway. I think it was overflow of oil. So you can see here, all the oil looked like it's just kind of grasping back. So, wow, there's a lot of oil. Yeah, it's a lot of oil, actually. So it's like, it's like it's almost trying to come back out. So we'll, we'll go ahead and measure and everything when the engine starts. And then we'll put some more oil if we need to. We'll I definitely have to probably put some more oil. It looked like it kind of kept on burping a lot more out than we wanted. So yeah, so that what could happen naturally without the engine being started. The oil could uh, just come back out. But yeah, there's no oil leak or anything uh, this morning. So I checked the bolts here. This is just from the drain of the oil flowing back out. And we'll get that cleaned up. I was concerned mainly for this one, this bolt here, that we had to retighten it earlier so that one's again was dry this morning so we should be fine we'll get this clean up it's on the cardboard right now it should absorb it in and that's it that's what we're going to do we're going to go ahead and bolt this on um uh, uh wire up the the headlights right there and the tail light and then we're going to fire up the engine i know i've been anticipating firing up the engine that's probably the last thing i want to do right now until uh all the safety which i you know I'm rationalizing but i do want to put it all in there that cool stuff then we'll try to turn on the fuel line. So you can see the fuel line. What's great about this is it has direct access to the carburetor. And another thing is you want to make sure too is um, some scooters, uh, depending on the carburetor, might not even let you close uh, your uh, seat cover. So some people have to modify and cut it open, which this was awesome. It was, you know, I still, you can see here, I still have some slack there. So even if I want to put like a PWK carb or anything, where the throttle cable sits on the very top of the diaphragm, I still have some room there. Looks like about good, maybe a good inch. So I can still upgrade to a PWK carb, change out the throttle cable from a CBK throttle cable to a PWK carb. Here's the cover that goes on to the back of it. You can see there, put two little Phillips screws. Just got to screw this in there. Uh, this has screws underneath the two of them. I didn't decide to, but you can actually, I forgot to tell you, you can cut it to customize it you want. I think this is perfect because once it's in here, it'll kind of close in and collapse on itself. It doesn't get hot, so it's okay to put cushion on here that came with it, especially. And um, you can use this as a heat of backing. You can actually, you know, have it permanently there, but I'm not going to use it like that. I'm just going to have it coat fold in like this because the cover, how it comes on, is going to come on like that. So it's going to be perfectly, it's enough to, uh, height there where it can actually fold this inward and also protect the terminal too from any moisture. So I decided to put it in there just give it a little bit more space there, if you can see. I'll lift it out, that way you can see it. See, there you go. The screws are already screwed in there. It's mounted in there securely. Put some washer because these are plastic. You always want to make sure you get washers underneath it uh, just to help hold the washer a little bit. I mean, help hold the plastic uh, from ripping uh, through the, you know, bolting it down so very excited i'm uh, getting ready now to go ahead and install the lights wire it up tuck it neatly how i'm gonna do that is i guess when i mount it here the string of wires i'm just gonna go ahead and route it cleanly in here and make sure it's snug and tight and i'll tap it here so i'll have to probably splice that open and just solder it and then heat shrink it back make it a little nice connection and i'll show you afterwards after it's all done so i'll do these two for left and right and then i'll work on the back as well so looking forward to it it's michael from ncy store great project for new year's